I'm Mike, and I'm gonna be your tour guide today as I take you through the brand new Lumion 10. I wanna walk you through some of the new features and show you how to get the most out of Lumion, and also help you understand what this program can do for you and your design practice. Forget what you've heard about rendering. Lumion is different. With Lumion, your clients will finally be able to see and feel the beauty of what you created in its final setting as you designed it. Lumion's fast render speeds and seamless workflow make unreasonable deadlines attainable. You can do it yourself and without specialized training. You'll have a massive object and material library and realistic styles available at the click of a button. There's no need to outsource or delegate rendering anymore. You can finally regain control of your own design presentations. After all, it's your design, your space, your landscape. Only you know how it should be brought to life and Lumion can help you do that. Here's the big picture in three steps. Start a new project by selecting your 3D design from just about any modeling program. Choose a starting scene and begin crafting a living environment by adding objects, materials, and weather. Last, render stills, videos, and virtual tours within your desired context with realistic lighting and effects. With Lumion 10, beautiful renders are within your reach. Let me show you. Once you've installed Lumion and clicked to start it up, a benchmark process will check the speed of your computer. Don't ignore the recommended specs, and don't skimp on hardware. You will especially need a good graphics card to get the most out of Lumion. Let's take a look at the welcome screen. Click on the computer speed button to see more detailed benchmark results. This computer has an NVIDIA GTX 2080 Ti card, and all the benchmark bars are blue, which means this setup is going to rip. You can rerun the benchmark if you install new hardware, but for now, we're all good. Click back. The news and learning section on the welcome screen links out to helpful blogs, knowledge base articles, and tutorials. These items update often, so be sure to check them out every time you start Lumion. Clicking the new button allows us to create a new project. You would first select the model from your hard drive and then choose from six environments to place it and start building your own scene. Let's not do this yet. Click back. The examples button takes you to nine pre-made examples, fully textured, lit, and with several effects lists to choose from. In other words, these are render ready. They're great for exploring more advanced techniques and learning how the pros do it. Villa Van Manen is brand new. Before we continue, how about we take a peek? Click on the villa to load the scene. This scene is super detailed, pretty amazing. Let's take a closer look. To move around in Lumion, use the WASD keys to move your camera view forwards, left, back, or right. Q moves the camera up, and E moves the camera down. Hold down the right click and move your mouse to look around. A good combination which gets you anywhere is to hold down the W key and the right mouse button at the same time, then move your mouse to steer. Let's fly around and have a look. To move faster, you can hold the shift key down as you're using the navigation keys. If you really want to push your speed, you can also throw in the space bar. I think we've explored the Van Man and Villa scene enough. Let's go back to the welcome screen by clicking on the files icon at the bottom right. Don't worry, we'll get our own scene whipped into shape in just a few moments. Let's finish exploring the welcome screen. As we're building our scenes, it's important to save our work with these two buttons. And when we're ready to continue working on a scene, we can load it from here. Clicking on the language button at the top will allow you to choose a different default language. My computer is set to English, but you can choose from many different languages without installing a different version of Lumion. That's it for the welcome screen. Let's jump right into creating a project. Click on the new button again. We need to import a model that we created outside of Lumion. This will be the foundation of our scene. Click on Select Model. I'm going to choose the Villa Van Manen SKP. If you'd like to follow along, import one of your own models. The process I'm going to show you works with any project. Let's start with the plain scene. My favorite thing about Lumion is that the sky is blue, the grass is green, and the sun is out. The weather options are an amazing way to see how lighting and shadows affect your design and scene. Let's go explore those options a bit. On the bottom left, you'll see the main navigation, which has four tabs, objects, materials, landscape, and weather. Let's dive into the weather options. It's easy to change the sun direction and height by using the dials. And you can easily control the amount of clouds by using the slider. New in Lumion 10 is real skies in build mode. 
This allows you to switch from a custom weather scenario to one of several high quality pre-built skies. Click on the thumbnail to open the Real Skies panel to select from several cloudy days or change the time of day with the tabs above for a completely different look. Let's pick this sunny, cloudy day and change the orientation a bit. At the bottom right, you can access the Photo, Movie, and 360 Panorama Studios. Use these to create stills, animations, virtual tours, and virtual reality. Click the disk icon to get back to the welcome screen to manage your files. It's always a good idea to save early and often. Let's do that now. Just click on the Build Mode button to jump back to the scene you were working on. Click the gear icon to access Lumion's settings. I like to keep my settings maxed out because I know my computer can handle it. If you are falling short on the benchmarks or have a large Lumion scene, you might consider backing down these settings to increase computer performance. If you have an ultra wide or 4K monitor, please know these can put a drain on your system and you may consider switching the Windows resolution to 1920 by 1080. Let's also turn on large thumbnails while we're here. Click back. Hovering over the question mark button overlays the screen with some helpful tips. If you are ever lost, look here for some help in build mode and even in the photo, movie, and 360 panorama studios. Moving back to the objects tab at the bottom left, there are several different category icons. They allow us to load outside models, effects, lights, objects, and more as we access the expansive Lumion library. You can import additional outside models using this button. There are several options for direct imports and live sync add-ons for Revit, Rhino, ArchiCAD, Vectorworks, and AutoCAD. These other icons in the objects action area allow you to move objects freely, vertically, or horizontally, and rotate, scale, and delete them. To assign a precise position to the object, you can use the type in field. I usually set all imported models to the origin at 000. With our villa ready, it's time to talk materials. And in Lumion 10, there's some new features that make materials even easier and more beautiful than ever before. Let me show you. Select the materials tab. Hovering your mouse above any surface from our imported model highlights it. If you click on a highlighted material, you will see the Lumion material dialog appear. There are five main category tabs of materials. Various, Indoor, Outdoor, Custom, and New. Each tab has its own subcategories. You can either swap the imported materials with a Lumion material or assign Lumion properties to the imported material. Let me explain. Glass, grass, and water are a good place to start and are perfect candidates to be swapped out and replaced by the animated, optimized, realistic Lumion materials. If you use the new model import from start or any live sync, materials with glass or water in the name are automatically taken care of. Lumion has trademarked pure glass presets available in the indoor and outdoor glass materials tabs. You can change the specific properties of any glass style that you select. Adjust the sliders to get the look you want. I like a little relief in my glass to take the computer edge off. The 3D grass in Lumion 10 has several configurable presets and you can have as many variations of grass as you like in the same scene. Let's click on this boring grass that's next to our sidewalk and add some landscape grass. This grass is best for large fields. Now let's click on the front yard and add a 3D grass material. These are a little heavier, but look so good. There are 167 new displacement mapping materials in Lumion 10. You can spot these by the D on the icon. These add depth and realism to an otherwise flat surface. I'm going to swap my brick and cobblestone. These materials are so 3D and they blend in perfectly with my grass. If you're good with texturing in your modeling program, it's easy to add Lumion properties to the imported materials. Just make it a standard material and adjust the gloss, reflectivity, and relief. There are several other tabs to adjust position, orientation, transparency, settings, weathering, and foliage. With these settings, it's easy to achieve an authentic look. If you find yourself using the same material again and again, save it to the new custom material library. For instance, after I've meticulously tweaked this brick to my liking, I can click here to save to my custom materials. 
I can easily apply this texture again by clicking on another imported material, then selecting my new favorite brick from my custom materials library. Click here to commit the changes. Keep in mind that in build mode, some things will look a little different than the final rendered version. For example, night skies, faraway objects, grass, lighting, and some material details will look pixelated while editing, but spectacular once rendered. This compromise between edit quality and output quality is what keeps you moving fast in Lumion. All right, enough about that. Let's take a look at the landscape tab. The third tab from the left opens the landscape functions. Let's switch on the grass. Using the sliders, you can adjust the size, height, and wildness. The 3D grass materials can be pretty heavy. This type of grass is not, so it's better for larger fields. Let's start by making some mountains and rolling hills surrounding our site using the height tools. Adjust the brush size and speed here. It's best to move our camera view high up in the air because it's easier to modify the terrain at a distance. You can raise, lower, flatten, jitter, and smooth the Lumion terrain to better fit with your imported design model. You can paint the terrain like this. Get the look you want by adjusting the pattern, brush size, and speed. Notice that the steep terrain is automatically rendered as cliffs. Very cool. You can change the overall style of the landscape here. There are several presets that represent just about every geographic region. You can add an ocean with one click. Adjust several properties using the sliders to create the right look. Let's turn the ocean off and fly back down to see how the mountains look with our model. Pretty nice. Let's go back to our main navigation and return to the object tab so we can start to detail our scene. Click on the place action, then select a category to place from. Let's start with nature. The categories library will open and we can see that there's a lot of objects to choose from. On the top, you see several subcategories as well. Notice the size of this collection. Each of the subcategories has several pages. Imagine the possibilities. Let's go to my favorite category, Fine Detail Nature. In the search field, let's look for chestnut. Click on a tree. You will notice that the model is now attached to your mouse. You can use keyboard shortcuts to rotate and scale to get it just right before placing. Click anywhere on the ground to place it. All of these objects are pre-animated, truly optimized for Lumion. They even respond to weather. You can see this tree gently blowing in the breeze. These fine detail nature models are much richer than the other nature objects in Lumion. As a result, they will make your scene heavier and can slow down render speed. Use the fine detail nature models sparingly. You can grow your landscape really fast using the mass placement function. Let's go back to the nature category and choose a plant model. Click here to activate the mass placement tool. Click to start the line. Then hold control to continue to add points. This menu pops up for you to adjust the number of items, direction, spacing, and offset. You can add additional objects to the mass placement path. Click on another object in the library, then click on the plus sign. See how it gets mixed in? Click the check mark to confirm. Let's take a look at the new paint placement tool. Click here to activate it. Pick an object, set the density, then hold your left click and sweep your mouse like a brush across an area to place hundreds of nature objects. Switch to erase to thin out the paint placement and achieve a more realistic result. The select, rotate, scale, and delete tools give you full control of the objects in your scene. Click here to edit all categories at the same time, or choose a specific category to isolate while editing. You can always edit an object's properties by clicking on it with the select tool. For instance, adjust the transparency of a tree to help your design show through. If you move your cursor to the top of the screen, layers will appear. You can have up to 20 layers. I like to organize imports, lights, landscape elements, and entourage objects in each of my layers. 
So our scene is shaping up nicely, but I'm ready to take some photos. So I'll tell you what, let's hop back into that Villa Van Manen example file. It's a little bit more complete than the scene that we have. It's truly render ready. It puts out beautiful images. Let me show you. Click on the files icon at the bottom right of your screen. Click on examples, then select the Van Manen Villa scene. Moving to the bottom right, the camera icon will take us to the photo studio. This is where you can take snapshots of the scene you've built and add effects to make a more compelling image. The interface of the photo studio is a bit different than build mode, but you still move around your scene with the same camera navigation controls. You can save camera locations by clicking the store camera button above each camera slot. Clicking on any stored camera takes you back to that spot in your scene. The numbers below get you access to additional photo sets. There's room for 100 shots. Click on the viewer window to render a quick, high quality preview. This feature is new in Lumion 10, and it will save us a lot of time and guesswork when adding effects. Keep in mind that the final render will be even better than what you see in the preview. Before we get into adding individual effects, let's explore the custom styles. These are truly the easy button in Lumion. Click on a custom style to get stunning results with very little effort. Check out the preview. Now, take a look at some renders of this project using only styles. There are several options, from realistic to sketchy. The FX button at the top left is the door to Lumion's effects. You can blend several effects to build your own custom style. There are several different effect categories. Sun, weather, sky, objects, camera, animation, artistic, and advanced. Let's start with the real skies effect. There are 41 real skies with pre-configured skylight settings, which includes five new real skies at night. It takes just a single click to give your design a clear blue morning, a stormy afternoon, an unforgettable sunset, or a wondrous starry night. The sun is casting pretty harsh shadows in this scene. Add the shadows effect to turn on soft shadows and fine detail shadows. Much better. We'll add another advanced effect, reflections. This is a very useful effect for achieving more realism. Lumion invented speed ray reflections. Switching it on improves reflections without much effect on computer performance. The pencil allows you to add reflection planes to specific surfaces. These are perfect reflections, but they have a bigger impact on computer performance. I've just skipped forward having added a number of effects to the still image. You can save your unique stack of effects to a file for later use. Then load the effects on each camera to save yourself a ton of time and clicks. You can render the current shot or the entire photo set. Check out these final renderings. Each one took less than a minute to render at 4K resolution. Absolutely amazing. Switch to the movie studio by clicking the icon on the lower right. This is where you become a director. Your job is to tell the story of your design. Let's record a camera path. Like before, you move around your scene clicking the camera icon to store camera locations. The difference now is that Lumion fills in the camera path between the locations to make a movie clip. You can change the speed of the clip with these arrows, or double click on the time to type a specific duration. Slower is always better. You now have better control of your camera movements in Lumion 10. Just click on the smooth or linear buttons on either side of the timeline. With the new ease in and out control for movie clips, you can choose whether the camera accelerates at the beginning of a movie clip and decelerates at the end or if the camera maintains a constant linear speed for the entire clip. You can drag and drop to change the clip order. You can play the clips back individually or all together by clicking here. You'll see a vertical line separating the clips when you play them back all together. Click and drag on the timeline to quickly scrub through your movie. Effect stacks work in all of the studios. So let's take a shortcut and load our effect stack that we created for a daytime render. I'm going to switch the real sky over to one of the new night skies. Since our scene is now dark, let's add another effect, layer visibility. Turn on the lights inside and lights outside layers. 
you can add even more magic to your night sky by combining with the new Aurora Borealis effect. Tweak the color shift and brightness to get a more subtle look. If you are using this effect with an animation, you definitely need to animate the time offset using keyframes. At the beginning of your clip, click the Add Keyframe button on the Time Offset slider. Advance the timeline to the end of the clip, add another keyframe, then adjust the time. Click in the preview window to see a high quality preview. This is a better representation of what your movie will actually look like. You can also click play to see the camera and effects in motion. Now, let's render the whole movie by clicking on the green button at the bottom right. You are presented with a menu which allows you to choose the render settings. Keep in mind, there's a trade-off between quality and render time. 5 stars, 30 frames per second, at full HD is a very high quality output. You will be prompted for a file name and location. Render time depends on your chosen quality level, graphics card, and the length and complexity of your movie. This is a brief glimpse of the rendered output. In an instant, you can place your design under a northern aurora or the wondrous beauty of the Milky Way. Pretty spectacular. Now try this. Effects can also be added to the entire timeline, affecting all movie clips. Click here to select the timeline, then click the FX button. On the advanced category, add the 3D movie effect to your animation. Render it again and check it out in the Oculus Go. Click here to access the Panorama Studio. The interface changes a bit, but the idea is the same. Move around your scene and select locations by clicking on the Store Camera button. Each location will eventually be rendered as a 360 panorama and uploaded to MyLumion for sharing and viewing online, or for use in a virtual reality headset. We now have six locations. We will load the effect stack that we created earlier to each of the positions. Let's first render as a virtual reality output suitable for all of the popular headsets. There's a big difference in the time it takes to render draft quality versus production quality. So unless it's really necessary, select draft quality. View these in your VR headset for a mind-blowing 3D experience. You can also render the panoramas to MyLumion. This will send an email with a unique link to your online render. This link can then be forwarded to anyone you like, so they can navigate around the latest design right away on a phone tablet, or computer. It's rendering to MyLumion now. Fast forwarding, we can now view the renders on the MyLumion website. You can jump between viewpoints by enabling these eye symbols, or you can jump between them in order using the arrows at the bottom left. Clicking on the settings button in the Panorama Studio takes you to your online management environment. This allows you to view and manage all of your MyLumion projects. Thanks so much for sticking with me through this tour of Lumion 10. I hope you picked up a few tips and tricks along the way and now fully understand the workflow. Be sure to check out our other in-depth, step-by-step tutorials on our website and YouTube page. This is by far the best way to learn more advanced techniques. Now, embrace your newfound rendering freedom. Get in there, load some models, breathe some life into them, and go make some beautiful renders. You're so close to that moment where your client truly sees what you see. I know you're gonna blow them away. I'll see you in the next tutorial.